Ace Whale. My name is Trenton Pierre. My ancestral name is Slamuch. Slamuch means rain. I am Coast Salish from Katsi First Nation. I would like to welcome everyone to the Global Peace Alliance. Today we are gathered to learn, share, and work on the traditional unceded and ancestral territories of the Coast Salish First Nations. I am the creator of Rain Awakens. Rain Awakens is a company that I created um, that has been driven from artwork. At a very young age, I realized I was a dreamer. I knew at a young age that I had a lot of great deal of purpose. This all came from listening and learning to the stories of what our people have been through. My ancestors and generations before me have been through attempted genocide. And my father was a survivor of residential school. I knew at a young age that I really wanted to show that our purpose was needed. It was up to their generation to survive genocide. It is up to our generation to show the world why. I would like to encourage anyone that is thinking about a big dream or something that they have per passion and purpose for to know that those dreams are yours. The only person that can tell you no is you. It's not your mom, your dad, uncle, teachers, brother or sister. When you have passion and dreams for something, it is up to you to go for it. I strongly encourage people that have a deep passion within to stand up for something, stand up for something that you believe in. Wherever your heart goes, it will defend you in realms that you cannot comprehend. When you stand up for something, you can change the world. You can cause a ripple effect and have others follow you. Through my discovery of artwork, I've realized that there are so many beautiful things in this world and what we're here for today is peace. The only way we're going to obtain peace is have a level of equality. We are so pleased to welcome back one of Surrey's sweetest and most talented voices. She is an R&B singer-songwriter with international hit songs to her name. She was Canada's Joey Awards winner in 2019 for best performance in a recorded song by a solo artist. Hi there! It has been my third year in a row to perform for the Peace Festival of the Global Peace Alliance BC Society, and it has truly been an honour. I have been requested to sing a Filipino song, so I have prepared for you a song called Sana, which means wish in English. This song talks about one's wishful thinking about life and living in harmony. And as we all weather this pandemic, may we all continue to be kind and giving. Happy 75th anniversary to the United Nations and happy International Day of Peace. Sana ang buhay ay walang dulo o hangganan Sana'y wala ng taong mahirap o mayaman Sana'y isang kulay Sana'y wala ng away Sana'y pagi na lang ang isipin ng bawat isa sa mundo Sana'y pag-ibig na lang ang isipin Sana'y magkatotoo Sana'y laging magbigayan Sana'y laging magmahalan Sana ang tao'y di nagkukutom o nauuhaw Sana hindi na gumagabi o umaaraw Sana'y walang tagini Sana'y walang taglamig Sana'y pag-ibig na lang Ang isipin ng bawat isa sa mundo Sana'y pag-ibig na lang Ang isipin 
Shyama Priya is back with her partner David Whitebean, both part of the Wild Moccasin Dancers. She began dancing as a teen and was part of the Vancouver 2010 Olympic opening ceremonies. She is a performer and a teacher, spreading the powwow culture.
Our next video is powerful and heart-wrenching, but that has been the history of missing and murdered Indigenous women and the present-day struggle of First Nations to overcome systemic racism, violence, and economic hardship. Despite railway blockades, prominent and public calls for justice and demands for a further investigation, efforts to force a public inquiry have stalled. Either way, an inquiry might not answer why as many as 1,000 Indigenous women have gone missing. There is a crisis of missing and murdered Indigenous women in this country that has become a national tragedy. The scale of the crisis has been clear for years. Hundreds of Indigenous women murdered or missing in Canada. A haunting national disgrace with no solution in sight. I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I wanna walk the highways. I wanna walk the alleys and the streets. I wanna walk the whole damn world. I wanna walk the highway. I wanna walk the alleys and the streets. I wanna walk the whole damn world. I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? Missing and murdered Indigenous women in this country that has become a national tragedy. Oh, how I miss you so much. I still can't believe that you're gone. Feeling like a huge piece of me's been torn and ripped from me from my chest. I can't breathe when I think about it. I miss your smile, miss your laugh. I miss our trips on that powwow trail. And now all I feel is that trail of tears, that trail of fears for what could have gone wrong and hoping that you're safe. I wanna go door to door. My eyes are so sore from all the tears I drop. My heart drops and every time I think about you and where you could be This is for the weight that I carry on my chest For the mothers and the families who get no rest And this is for the loved ones, the loved ones And the family, we want you close We wanna hold you close, we want you back the most And this is for my sisters who were stolen in the night For the ones who were hustling and fighting for their life It cuts to the soul, but it has me wondering Oh, where does she go? Oh, where does she go? I'm looking for my sister where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I wanna walk the highway. I wanna walk the alleys and the streets. I wanna walk the whole damn world. I wanna walk the highway. I wanna walk the alleys and the streets. I wanna walk the whole damn world. I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? Why no sense of urgency? Why no state emergency? Should have been called when it was two or three. Hundred to a thousand, yeah, you feel me? Government criminalize indigenous men and blame them and then say it's not high on our radar. How far will you let it slide? Just another form of genocide. That's right, I'm calling you out. I know what this is all about. You want the land, so now we stand. We stand up, fist up. Wear your song, make us strong. We say no more. We say no more. No more stolen sisters. No more stolen sisters. I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I wanna walk the highway. I wanna walk the alleys and the streets. I wanna walk the whole damn world. I wanna walk the highway. I wanna walk the alleys and the streets. I wanna walk the whole damn world. I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? Why? I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? I'm looking for my sister. Where did she go? Where did she go? Why? Railway blockades, prominent and public calls for justice and demands for a further investigation. Efforts to force a public inquiry have stalled. Either way, an inquiry might not answer why it's many as one thousand. There is a crisis of missing and murdered indigenous women in this country that has become a national tragedy.
The National Inquiry's calls for justice, presented as legal imperatives, include the following transformative actions in the areas of health, security, justice, and culture. Establishing a National Indigenous and Human Rights Ombudsperson and a National Indigenous and Human Rights Tribunal. Developing and implementing a National Action Plan to ensure equitable access to employment, housing, education, safety, and health care. Providing long-term funding for education programs and awareness campaigns related to violence prevention and combating lateral violence. Prohibiting the apprehension of children on the basis of poverty and cultural bias. To put an end to this tragedy, the rightful power in place of women, girls, and 2S LGBTQIA people must be reinstated, which requires dismantling the structures of colonialism within Canadian society, said Commissioner Michelle Odette. This is not just a job for governments and politicians. It is incumbent on all Canadians to hold our leaders to account. The history of First Nations and the genocide that occurred in the past by the colonialists is only now being taught in our schools. In remembrance of the horrors of residential schools, we mark each year Orange Shirt Day. Orange Shirt Day is to remember and honor Indigenous children who attended residential schools. It is an opportunity to create meaningful discussions about the effect of residential schools and the legacy that they left behind. A discussion all Canadians can tune into and create bridges with each other for reconciliation. I feel like as though uh, not a mute. Greetings, all my relatives. Nimuyut. We are all one. My name is Chief Robert Joseph. I'm co-founder and ambassador for Reconciliation Canada. I spent 11 years in a residential school. I speak to you today from the unceded territories of the Squamish First Nation. September 30th is Orange Shirt Day. I am honored to commemorate this day with you. We acknowledge and honor residential school survivors and their families. We remember their pain, their suffering and loss and we educate each other to bring about healing and reconciliation. We pledge to ourselves that matters like residential schools will never happen again. When we take part in Orange Shirt Day, we are affirming and agreeing together that every child matters. Every child matters. The miracle of Orange Shirt Day unfolded at a commemoration event held at St. Joseph's Mission Residential School in Williams Lake in 2013. It was there that Phyllis Webstad, a former student, told her story. It was the school year 1973-1974. She was a little six-year-old girl living with her granny on the Dog Creek Reserve at that time. As with all grandchildren, she was cherished and loved by her gran. While they did not have much money, Phyllis's gran made sure to dress her in a set of new clothes for the occasion. Among the new clothing was a bright, shiny sweater. Upon admission, she was stripped of her belongings, including that orange sweater. To Phyllis, the color orange has always reminded her of her experiences at residential school. Her memories are stark and vivid. My feelings never mattered. No one really cared. 
all of us little children were crying and no one cared, she told the gathering. Phyllis Webstad is a Northern Sigwepnik and a member of the Captain First Nation Canoe Creek Indian Band. She has confronted her residential school experience. She has restored her dignity and worth. She is highly respected for her work and her courage in advancing the well-being of Aboriginal people and educating others about our shared history of colonialism. Thank you, Phyllis, for telling your story. We marvel at and appreciate your courage. And now, to all of you, remember Phyllis's story and carry it forward. We must struggle always to halt hurtful ways. Hatred has no place among us. Racism must be stopped. Bullying is not acceptable anywhere. Now it's up to all of us to do what is right. It starts with you. Much respect and love to you all. We are happy to bring you dancing groups from Princess Margaret organized and inspired by their teacher, Raman Sangha. अखियां च पाके नी तू सुरमा सुरमा सिखया तू दस कि तो तुरना तुरना अखियां च पाके नी तू सुरमा सुरमा सिखया तू दस कि तो तुरना तुरना या या ओ अखियां च पाके नी तू सुरमा सुरमा सिखया तू दस कि तो तुरना तुरना जेड़ा सूट तू पाया या पाया सब पूछ दे ने कि तो मिल दाया काली तेरी गुत गोल मोड़ लग हिल दाया देख देख हो ही जंदा हाल बुरा दिल दाया आओ काली तेरी गुत गोल मोड़ लग हिल दाया देख देख हो ही जंदा हाल बुरा दिल दाया काली तेरी गुत गोल मोड़ लग हिल दाया Hello, my name is Pat O'Connor. I'm one of the directors of the Global Peace Alliance. Our president, Niovi Patsiakis, asked if I could provide an overview of where we're at. 
Canada's present government is implementing a 73% increase in military spending. The majority of the spending will go to weapons of mass destruction, fighter jets and warships. Our government voted against a UN motion to support a ban on nuclear weapons that was supported by 122 countries. More than 90% of the deaths in modern warfare are to civilians. Profits for the armaments industry is more important than humanitarian concerns. There is some parliamentary opposition to these war plans. The NDP defense critic says our fighter planes should be built in Canada, the spin-off jobs being the most important issue. That this public money spent in other sectors would provide far more jobs is forgotten. The Green Party says no to fighter planes or armed drones. Following U.S. military dictate would create more death with most victims being civilians. Instead of fighter planes, the Green Party calls for a Canadian-made search and rescue aircraft. Canada's arms industry is promoted by our federal government. Canada's military and arms industry must be transitioned to meet human needs, not those of the military industrial complex. Wars and war preparation is not for social justice, nor is it environmentally sustainable. 1,000 times more people die each year from preventable disease than from terrorist attacks. Any country unwilling to comply with demands coming from the U.S. are faced with military attacks and blockades. Canada participated in NATO wars of destruction against Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, Libya, and Syria. Canada has supported sanctions and blockades against Venezuela. Countries that say no to foreign corporate interest should not be threatened with a military blockade. Canada has decided to purchase 12 armed drones for $5 billion. This purchase alone is more than the cost to provide current and future water and sewer needs to First Nations communities. The resources going into war would be better spent on ensuring a healthy environment. The U.S. military spews out 25% of American emissions. A 3% cut of the U.S. military budget is enough to feed 800 million people facing starvation. We are living through a mass extinction event. Wildlife has declined 60% in the last 40 years. Over 83% over 83 of arable land is taken up by animal agriculture and is unsustainable. We need to change what is on our plate for personal and planetary health. According to the World Health Organization, we are currently feeding 70 to 100 billion land animals while 800 million people are starving. Political parties in Georgia and Gazakistan have initiated an international call for the closure of U.S. military labs. The U.S. military runs biological labs in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Gazakistan, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, and other countries. The biological weapons produced were used in Cuba, Korea, Egypt, Liberia, Japan, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii. State resources now allocated for the development of biological and other deadly weapons should instead go to provide free medical care for all the world's people. Coronavirus was identified many years ago as the next probable pandemic. And the next likely virus as well has been identified, but private pharmaceutical corporations decided it was unprofitable to, to develop a vaccine. With C Canada's growing income inequality, we have deaths of despair on the rise. Growing poverty increases drug overdoses, suicide, and alcohol abuse, ca causing Canada's lifespan ranking to fall. In Canada, the top 20 billionaires increased their wealth by a total of 37 billion since March alone. The world's richest 1% caused double the carbon dioxide emissions as the poorest 50%, says Oxfam. The eight richest billionaires own as much as half the rest of the people of the world. The Green New Deal calls for a 50% cut now in military spending. No to foreign occupation, 
and the dismantling of foreign bases. In conclusion, let's say no to war and austerity and yes to peace and social justice. Thank you. Zoha, I never got. Sumna come, hey, na kinesa ochinya, and abashava da rochaya, na 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 Oh, 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 oh,
peace of the silent stars Deep peace of the blowing air to you Deep peace of the quiet earth Let peace, let peace, let peace fill your soul May peace, may peace, may peace keep you whole. Deep peace of the rolling waves to you, deep peace of the silent stars. Deep peace of the blowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet let peace, let peace, let peace fill your soul. May peace, may peace, may peace keep you whole. Deep peace of the rolling waves to you, deep peace of the silent stars. Deep peace of the blowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth. Let peace, let peace, let peace fill your soul. May peace, may peace, may peace keep you People say to me, oh, you gotta be crazy, how can you sing in times like these? Don't you read the news, don't you know the score, how can you sing when so many others grieve? People say to me, what kind of fool believes that a song will make a difference in the end? By way of a reply, I say a fool such as I, who sees a song as somewhere to begin. A song is somewhere to begin. Something worth believing in If changes are to come There are things that must be done And a song is somewhere to begin and People say to me Oh, you gotta be crazy How can you dream? Times like these. Thanksgiving is over, yet many of us have much to be thankful for each and every day. Our health, our families, and our work. However, not all are able to enjoy these. Please support the migrant workers as they help us in the economy. Many come to our country to do essential work, yet their basic human rights are often denied, such as health care, decent pay, and a respectful and protected safe work environment. My employer forced me to, to stay home for almost three months. You cannot go anywhere, you, can, you cannot meet your friends. Many people come and go to the house and, and not even wearing a mask. I can't refuse, I can't complain because I, I'm, I'm too being scared to lose my job. She will terminate me, I lost my job and for being lost my job is also losing my family future. I was working there 19 hours every single day. They only paid me $600 every month. My holiday was start 10 o'clock and after when I came back home so, and they still say, oh, you should work. We are going out, so you should take care of our kids. So 
yeah so it's even the holiday was not holiday if if you don't have um, like a good working environment you tend to like stay with the family just because you have to stay um, employed because we don't have a permanent residency that's why our employers taking advantage advantages and we are being abused I don't want to lose my job, of course, because I have my family in the Philippines. I'm only the one supporting them. You think of, you might lose your income, yep. you will not get paid, or yep. you lose your job because you're ill. I can really straight telling them that right. I am really sick. I know that if I get sick, no one can take care of me as well. I'm alone here in Canada. I didn't know what to do because I was laid off. I didn't know whether I've been fired completely or not. Some of us care workers, we don't have like open work permit. We are stuck with same employer. You also have your family back home to support, so they depend on you. My daughter is already 18 and 16 and it's really hard because like I miss most of their life already and I want to provide them with with um, good life you know the promise of Canada because of the time difference it's hard because sometimes they need you but they cannot reach you because you are working and you cannot even hold your phone some employers didn't want you to have the phones with you family separation is devastating because it's a mental and physically and emotionally we deserve benefits as caregivers and we work very hard to support canadians family and we contribute to canadian society and economy we need um, landed status upon arrival. We need permanent residency so we can take our rights. We care workers need paid sick days for our own health, for our safety, and for the well-being and safety of the family we were taking care of. We need to be together. We need the family together. We need the status. The status for all, that is status now. Just Dance is a group of Taiwanese ladies who simply enjoy dancing together. In past years, Just Dance has brought their performances to the White Rock Taiwanese Canadian Association, the City of Surrey, local seniors' homes, and the annual Alexandra Festival. Today they will be performing two dances for us. Oh 
轮，换一换新天地，别有一个新。上海，夜上海，你是个不夜城。花灯起，车声响，歌舞升平。只见他笑脸迎，谁知他内心苦闷？夜深。Cuban people are highly educated, and their doctors travel all over the world in times of crisis to help, as they did with COVID in Italy and other places. They need our support and are so deserving of the Nobel Peace Prize. In addition, it is well known that the people of Cuba have suffered for years from an economic embargo, which leaves them short of basic necessities, goods, and medicine. Bringing a few toiletries and gifts when we visit Cuba is not what is needed. Our voices to lift this unfair embargo must be raised. 
Like so many issues, take the time to email or speak to your chosen representative. My name is Alicia Hrabko. I'm one of the co-chairs of the National Network on Cuba and the U.S. coordinator of the International Committee for Peace, Justice and Dignity. I started working on Cuba Solidarity Projects in the early 90s after a visit there. I was immediately inspired by the humanity and determination of the Cuban people in their struggle for peace and sovereignty and the positive role they play in the community of nations. Just recently, I joined a number of activists in the United States and around the world in a campaign to nominate the heroic Cuban Medical Brigade for the Nobel Peace Prize. We have received support from organizations and individuals, uh, including the Network in Defense of Humanity, uh, La Via Campesina, Adolfo Perez Esquivel, Alice Walker, Danny Glover, Dilma Rousseff, uh, Ignacio Ramonet, Noam Chomsky, Rafael Correa, and Silvio Rodriguez, just to mention a few. And so far, more than 25,000 individuals have endorsed the campaign. Selflessness, solidarity, and working for a common good characterize what the Nobel Peace Prize should be about. The, Cuba, the Cuban International Medical Brigade has saved more than 80,000 lives since 2005 and have been fighting COVID-19 in 27 countries. Who can deserve the Nobel Peace Prize more than Cuba Henry Reeb International Medical Brigade? You can help us by signing on the petition uh, by going to www.cubanobel.org. That is cubanobel.org. Let us continue to fight to end the 60 years old U.S. blockade on Cuba. Let us remember Cuba needs our solidarity, but more than that, we need Cuba and his example in showing that a better world is necessary and possible. Que 
uh, Alliance BC. And I wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about issues surrounding Palestine and Israel. So first and foremost, I'm a settler on the unceded territories uh, today on the Kwantlen, KC, Semiyamu, and Kakai First Nations. And, is, and I work as an anti-oppression educator in the Surrey School District, which is a settler colonial institution. Um, I'm coming to you today because I actually am, am of Jewish faith. Uh, I'm a Sephardic Jew. My family's from Morocco, uh, and we define ourselves as Arabic Jews, having grown up in an Arabic culture. I think it is very important for us uh, that we always look at peace as something that needs to be diverse, as something that doesn't erase voices or erase peoples. So we always have these ideas around what peace means, but they tend to be very shallow and they tend to leave a lot of voices out. I think there is no more clear of an example than our indigenous peoples, but also the realities of what's happening in Palestine and in Israel. So I do have family in Israel. Uh, none of them live uh, on, in settlements, but I want to make sure that we don't escape the reality of what's happening in our world right now. We have folks that are suggesting that if you criticize the Netanyahu government, uh, if you criticize uh, Israeli state structures, that somehow you are being anti-Semitic. I wholly reject that notion, because I as a Jew with family who lives in the modern state of Israel and know full well the injustices that happen to all types of people, to include my own family. I think, as a democratic citizen of any nation, we have the right to complain, we have the right to criticize, we have the right to grow, we have the right to change things. And that is the goal. So when we talk about Palestinian sovereignty, when we talk about Palestinian bodies, when we talk about the reality of what occurred when Israel was created, and especially as settlements were developed, and the erasure of Palestinian people, I think it's not about anti-Semitism. It's in fact the very thing that all Jews should be doing. Because we are a faith that believes in questions. We are a faith that believes in looking deeper. And I think there is no more path to justice that is better than actually questioning our state structures, that actually takes on our government when they do wrong. The reality is that Palestine will only exist when Israelis and Jews like myself truly understand the struggle of liberation. And funny, isn't it funny that in fact we do, but we choose to ignore it? So to me, there is no peace until there is Palestine. To me, the idea of fighting anti-Semitism, or Islamophobia for that matter, or any kind of racism or discrimination, cannot be delinked from the Palestinian struggle for liberation. This is not a zero-sum game. This is not about one side winning all. Because to be honest, that's what the Israeli government is doing right now. They don't see a partner in peace. They don't see another side. And what I'm going to say and challenge everyone to do is whether it's in the way we define anti-Semitism, in the way that we fight for our stories, for, from a Jewish context, from a Muslim context, from a Palestinian context, from a Christian context, every context, that we do so without erasing others. The liberation of ourselves is tied to the liberation of others. So when we say a free Palestine, what I believe is that that makes me stronger as a Jewish person, that makes my Israeli family stronger, and I hope that we can actually engage in dialogue and ways of peace that allow us for the truth to come out. Erasure, apartheid, oppression will never bring peace. And that's what I'm going to leave you with today. So I want you to remember, it's okay to criticize. Be the best citizen you can be. Be the best human you can be and bring forward all stories. Here's to a free Palestine. Musical ambassadors of peace at work in Rwanda camp, southwest Uganda. Conflict resolution between warring tribes becomes real when members of opposing tribes dance together. Musical ambassador Abaho Gift Conrad. 
has brought members from warring Congolese tribes together to learn each other's dances and sow the seeds of genuine trust and friendship. Dancing and singing and drumming together creates real bonds of love. Unfortunately, as we have seen in the news, agreements written on paper are just that, agreements written on paper, which can be torn up and thrown away. In recent months, an estimated 200,000 people have fled fighting in the Democratic Republic of Congo's South Kivu Highlands. The fighting has origins in a long submarine struggle over land, power, and citizenship. And it descends into village burnings and widespread killings. Congolese tribes that describe themselves as indigenous, Bapemba, Bafuliru, and Banyendu communities are fighting the Banyamulenge, a cattle herding group of Rwandan origin often derided as outsiders. Foreign rebel groups from neighboring countries have also taken sides in the violence, which is centered in remote mountainous areas where many Damiamulenge have lived for generations. Please help us continue our programs. Make your donation to Musical Ambassadors of Peace. Deep peace of the rolling waves to you, deep peace of the silent stars. Deep peace of the blowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth. Let peace, let peace, let peace fill your soul. May peace, may peace, may peace keep you whole. Deep peace of the rolling waves to you, deep peace of the silent stars. Deep peace of the blowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet let peace, let peace, let peace fill your soul. May peace, may peace, may peace keep you whole. Deep peace of the rolling waves to you, deep peace of the silent stars. Deep peace of the blowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth. Let peace, let peace, let peace fill your soul. May peace, may peace, may peace keep you We would like to thank the Global Peace Alliance for letting us be part of their Shaping Peace Festival in honor of the United Nations 75th anniversary. Next we have a song calling for world peace, unity, togetherness, and reconciliation. It demonstrates that we are the human race, and the more we unite, the stronger we become. Peace is love, and love is what we need to spread around. In Uganda, peace activists and charities are working to make their world and that of migrants and war refugees better. Thank you to Abaho Conrad for reaching out to us and showing us the work of his organization. <laughs> 